International Commercial Ar Arbitration, the Alternative Dispute Resolution Act of 2004 adopted the United Nations Commission on International Trade Law. Uh, this was the model or the UN Citral Model Law on International Commercial Arbitration of 1985 with the amendments as adopted in 2006. The model law is designed to assist states in reforming and modernizing their laws on arbitral procedure so as to take into account the particular features and needs of international commercial arbitration by operation of Article 19 of the ADR Act made the model law the governing statute for international commercial arbitration. The Alternative Dispute Resolution Act of 2004 has previous dealings with legal representation in international arbitration, confidentiality of arbitral proceedings, referral of court action to arbitration, definition and function of the appointing authority, the grant of interim measures of prosecution, governing law, and the place and language of arbitration. Arbitration is international if any of the following instances occur. 1. The party's place of business, which at the time of the conclusion of arbitration agreement is in different states. Number 2. The place of arbitration provided in the agreement and in which the parties have their places of business is outside the Philippines. Third, the place where a substantial part of the obligation is to perform outside the Philippines. And lastly, parties have expressly agreed that the subject or the subject matter of the arbitration agreement relates to more than one country. Arbitration is commercial if it covers matters arising from all relationship of a commercial nature, whether contractual or not. An international commercial arbitration proceeding conducted in the Philippines under the auspices or umbrella of the Alternative Dispute Resolution Act is domestic and international in character. An international arbitration conducted outside the Philippines is a foreign arbitration. The provisions of the implementing rules and regulation on international arbitrations are default rules. They are applicable only in the absence of or in default of applicable provisions contained in. 1. An agreement in force between the Philippines and other states. And number two, an agreement between the parties on the applicable rules. The following are the rules in the interpretation of the Alternative Dispute Resolution Act of 2004, uh, particularly the model law and the implementing rules and regulations. The interpretation of the Alternative Dispute Resolution Act. Second, interpretation of the model law. It should be regarded that the said law is of international origin and there is a need for uniformity in its interpretation. And lastly, the interpretation of the implementing rules and regulation. Written communications, electronic or otherwise, therefore, play a vital role in international arbitration. The implementing rules and regulations devoted provisions on the delivery and reception thereof, in line with the policy of the party autonomy. The general register on the receipt of communications in international commercial arbitration are those provided for by the parties in their arbitration agreement. In default, of such rules, communication is deemed received. If it is delivered to the addressee personally or at his place of business, 
habitual residence or mailing address. Second, if there is none, if it is delivered by registered letter or any other means. The Alternative Dispute Resolution Act and the IRR limited the application of the rules on waiver in mediation proceedings to waiver or waivers of confidentiality and privilege only. In case of international commercial arbitration, the IRR expanded the application of the rules on waiver to include non-compliance with rules or requirements. Objections to non-compliance with the rules or any requirement under the arbitration agreement must be raised without undue delay or within the time prescribed failing which the right to object is deemed waived based on the equitable doctrine of estupel. If we say estupel in Pais, it happens when one by his acts representations or admissions or by his own silence when he ought to speak out intentionally or through culpable negligence induces another to believe certain facts to exist and such other person relies and acts on such belief in manner that he will be prejudiced if the former is permitted to deny the existence of such facts. So, an admission or representation cannot be denied or disproved as against the person relying on it. The records and evidence and award in international commercial arbitration are confidential and shall not be disclosed except with the consent of the parties. Second, for the limited purpose of disclosing to the court relevant documents in cases where resort to the court is allowed as an assurance of impartiality and due process in the arbitral proceedings the irr mandates that the parties shall be given a full opportunity to present their sides the date of commencement of international commercial arbitration is to be determined by the parties the default date of commencement of arbitration is the date on which a request for that dispute to be referred to arbitration is received by the respondents the governing law generally refers to substantive law is the law or legal system applicable to the complete resolution of the dispute Conflicts of law or private international law that part of the municipal or municipal law or state which directs courts and administrative agencies when confronted with legal problem involving a foreign element whether or not they should apply a foreign law is the set of domestic laws that determines which between the domestic laws of two or more states should apply to the resolution of a dispute involving foreign elements. The appointing authority in an international commercial arbitration is the person or institution name in the arbitration agreement or regular arbitration institution under whose rules the arbitration is agreed to be conducted authorized to make the default appointment of arbitration or sole arbitrator. In addition, the appointing authority in an international commercial arbitration has the following functions. 1. Take the necessary measures to appoint an arbitrator in case any party or the arbitrators already appointed or any third party fails to perform any function necessary for the appointment of the arbitrator. Two, decide on the challenge against the arbitrator if arbitral tribunal rejects the challenge. Three, consider the qualifications of an arbitrator, the necessity of ensuring impartiality and independence of the 
arbitrator and the admissibility of appointing an arbitrator who is of nationality different from those of the parties. In an ad hoc arbitration, unless the parties have agreed upon a different procedure, the default appointment of an arbitrator shall be made by the national president or the integrated bar of the Philippines or his duly designated representative. In line with the principle of party autonomy and self-determination, the parties in an international commercial arbitration are free to determine the number of arbitrators and procedure for appointment. The default number of arbitrators is three and the following is the default procedure for appointing. One, in arbitration with three arbitrators, each party shall appoint one arbitrator and both appointed arbitrators shall appoint the third arbitrator failing which the appointment shall be made by the appointing authority. Second, in arbitration with sole arbitrator, the arbitrator shall be appointed upon request of a party by the appointing authority. Take note that the decision of the appointing authority on this matter shall be immediately executory and shall not be subject to a motion for reconsideration or appeal. And if any party is not satisfied with the appointment of any, some, or all of the arbitrators, he may file a petition in court challenging the appointment of the arbitrators. The arbitral tribunal is deemed constituted when the sole arbitrator or the third member of the panel or arbitrators who has been nominated has accepted his nomination and written communication of said nomination and acceptance has been received by the party making the request. An arbitrator may be challenged only if circumstances exist that give rise to a justifiable doubt as to his 1. impartiality or independence or possession of the qualifications agreed upon by the parties. A party who appointed an arbitrator shall not be allowed to challenge the arbitrator grounded on the rule of estupel as I made mention a while ago. However, estupel does not apply where the act of appointing was performed without the knowledge, actual or constructive of the actual facts and except for reasons which the appointing party became aware of after the appointment was made. Here are the procedures for the challenge in international commercial arbitration. 1. Challenging party shall send written statement of the reasons for the challenge to arbitral tribunal within 15 days after becoming aware of the circumstances constituting the ground for challenge. 2. If the challenge before the arbitral tribunal is not successful, the challenging party may request the appointing authority within 30 days from notice of the decision rejecting the challenge to decide the challenge which decision shall be made immediately executory and not subject to a motion for reconsideration or appeal. A party may file a petition in court questioning the decision in the challenge against the arbitrator in accordance with the special rules of court on ADR. After a successful challenge, a substitute arbitrator will have to be appointed. The appointment of the substitute arbitrator shall be governed by the same rules applicable to the appointment of the replaced arbitrator. If an arbitrator in international commercial arbitration becomes 
de jure or de facto unable to perform his functions or fails to act without undue delay, his mandate terminates. If he withdraws or if the parties agree on the termination, the withdrawal of the arbitrator does not carry with it an implied acceptance of the existence or veracity of the ground for termination. If the controversy remains, any party may request the appointing authority to decide on the termination of the arbitrator, which decision shall be immediately executory and not subject to a motion for reconsideration of appeal. Jurisdiction is the right to act or the power and authority to hear and determine a cause. In the case of an arbitral tribunal, it is the authority by virtue of which it can resolve disputes in arbitration proceeding by rendering an award thereon. Jurisdiction over the subject matter law confers the jurisdiction of an arbitral tribunal over the subject matter of the controversy. There are two instances when the court, a quasi-judicial agency or arbitral tribunals act without jurisdiction, namely, when it has no jurisdiction in the first place, in which case there is lack of jurisdiction. Take note, there is no jurisdiction in the first place. When it went beyond its jurisdiction, which it had in the first place, in which case is acted in excess of jurisdiction. In the case of the court, lack of excess of jurisdiction are the proper grounds for petition for certiorari. If we say petition for certiorari, we are referring to a document which a losing party files with the Supreme Court asking the Supreme Court to review the decision of the lower court. So this is as part of the rule of the civil procedure. The jurisdiction of an arbitral tribunal includes the authority to rule on its own jurisdiction in the same way that courts have the power to rule on motions to dismiss complaints or petitions based on lack of jurisdiction. In determining the jurisdiction of an arbitral tribunal, the arbitration agreement or agreement clause should be treated as an independent and separate agreement from the container agreement and the invalidity of the latter does not automatically result in the nullity of the former. It is only in the event that arbitration clause or agreement is itself void in existence on or in operative that the arbitral tribunal's jurisdiction may be questioned. The issue of jurisdiction may be raised at any stage of the proceedings even on appeal and it's not lost by waiver or estopel. The rule is different in a challenge against the jurisdiction of arbitral tribunals in an international commercial agreement. The challenge should be raised not later than the submission of the statement of defense in the answer or in motion to dismiss otherwise objections are deemed waived. Judicial Review of Jurisdictional Issue The decision of a court or quasi-judicial agency without jurisdiction over the subject matter is null and void ab initio. If we say null and void ab initio, as if there is no uh, legal effect. Like for example, okay, a contract uh, between two parties. Uh, for this particular uh, judicial review of jurisdiction issue, okay, the consideration of this contract applying null and void ab initio is as if it never existed in the first place. The contract never existed in the first place. 
In the same manner, the award of arbitral tribunal, which does not have jurisdiction, is also null and void ab initio, unless there is a waiver of the absence of jurisdiction. Take note, okay, it is required that waiver of absence of jurisdiction must be uh, presented. If the arbitral tribunal renders a preliminary ruling on the jurisdictional issue, an aggrieved party may elevate the ruling for review by the regional trial court within 30 days. So 30 days, the regional trial court okay, may review the jurisdictional uh, issue or the, re the ruling particularly. So the review uh, will be considered from the receipt of the ruling and the decision of the court and shall be immediately executory and not subject to a motion for reconsideration or appeal. The arbitration proceedings may proceed notwithstanding dependency of the uh, judicial action with the regional trial court unless the court issues in the meantime a temporary restraining order or a writ of preliminary injunction enjoining the conduct of the international commercial arbitration during the pendency of the court action or petition. If we say temporary restraining order, we are referring to an order by the court immediately prohibiting a threatened action, while uh, a preliminary injunction is an order prohibiting an action to preserve the status quo while the underlying court case is decided. Jurisdiction over the parties, jurisdiction of an arbitral tribunal over the person of the parties in arbitration is conferred by the consent of the parties to submit to arbitration. This consent may be contained in an agreement to submit to arbitration. Pre-casual consent, which is entered into at the time of the execution of an arbitration agreement or a contract which includes an arbitration clause or in a submission agreement. Present casual consent between the parties to who do not have an arbitration agreement or a contract with an arbitration clause but who nonetheless agree to submit an existing dispute or controversy for arbitration. The procedures for granting interim or urgent measures in international commercial arbitrations are as follows. After the arbitral tribunal has been constituted, any party may request for the grant of interim measure from the arbitral tribunal against the adverse party. This request shall be in writing transmitted by reasonable means to the arbitral tribunal and the adverse party, describing the precise relief in appropriate detail, the ground, and the evidence supporting the request. The relief may be granted in order to prevent irreparable loss or permanent loss, to provide for security for the performance of an obligation, to produce or preserve evidence, to compel any other appropriate acts or omission. The grant of interim measure may be conditioned upon the provision security or any act or omission is specified in the order. Number four, the order either granting or denying the request for interim measure shall be binding upon the parties and either party may apply with the courts for assistance in implementing or enforcing it. A party who refuses to comply with the order for an interim measure shall be liable for damages resulting from non-compliance including all expenses and reasonable attorney's fees paid in obtaining judicial enforcement. The party who refuses 
to comply with the court or court order compelling compliance with the interim measure may be cited for indirect contempt of court. Before the constitution of the arbitral tribunal or the extent that the arbitral tribunal already constituted has no power to act effectively, the interim measure may be requested from the court in accordance with the special rules of court on, arbit on uh, ADR or Alternative uh, Dispute Resolution. So next topic, the legal representation in international commercial arbitration. As a general rule, only lawyers accredited by the Supreme Court can practice or practice law in our country or in the Philippines. In an international commercial arbitration, okay, which is conducted in the Philippines, a party may be represented by a person of his choice, even if non-lawyer. However, if a non-lawyer is so appointed, he shall not be authorized to appear as counsel in any Philippine court or in any quasi-judicial body, even if such appearance is in relation to the arbitration which he appears. Rules of Procedure in International Commercial Arbitration The procedures in International Commercial Arbitration in default of an agreement of the parties are as follows. One is statement of claims. Within the period agreed upon by the parties, the claimant shall state the facts supporting his claim, the issues and relief or remedy suit, and shall be submit or refer to relevant documents. Second is statement of defenses. Respondent shall state his uh, defenses. Third, default of the parties. Failure of the claimant or respondent to communicate their statements of claims or defenses during the period of their failure to appear at a hearing or to produce documentary evidence result in the default of the failing party. So take note that the default of the claimant for failure to communicate his statement of claims results in the termination of proceedings. And default of the respondent to communicate his statement of defenses shall not terminate the proceedings and instead shall proceed without such failure being considered as an admission of claimant's allegation. Number four, amendment of claims or defenses. Take note that parties may amend or supplement their claims or defenses as the case may be unless the tribunal considers amendment as inappropriate. Number five, hearings. The tribunal shall determine whether to hold oral hearings only, oral arguments only, or just require the submission of documents during the appropriate stages of arbitral proceedings. For court assistance in taking evidence, the tribunal or any party with the approval of the tribunal may request from the courts assistance in taking the evidence. For subpoena, the tribunal has the power to issue subpoena in order to compel the attendance of witnesses, and or the production of documents. The arbitral tribunal does not have contempt power. Take note. So the arbitral tribunal, okay, I repeat, does not have contempt powers. For expert, the tribunal may appoint experts to report to it on specific issues, require the parties to provide the expert with relevant information or access to documents. The expert sought by the tribunal is similar to an amicus curiae or the friend of the court, except that the experts or the experts field of specialization is not limited to law.
Number six, conclusion or closure. An international commercial arbitration may be concluded or closed in either two ways. It can be by an award or settlement or by means of termination. If we say award in arbitration, we are referring to the arbitrator's final decision on the case. In termination, a tribunal shall issue an order for termination of arbitration when 1. The claimant withdraws his claim unless the respondents object on the basis of legitimate interest in obtaining a final settlement. Second, the parties agree to terminate proceedings in writing. So it should be in writing. Take note. Third, tribunal finds that the continuation of the proceedings has become unnecessary or impossible. In both instances, that uh, the mandate of the arbitral tribunal ends except if the conclusion of the proceeding or the proceedings is by way of an award or settlement, the uh, tribunal's mandate extends for the following reason. One, to correct and interpret the award. Two, to set aside an exclusive recourse against the arbitral award or number three when reserved to the quantification of costs and the determination of the party liable therefore or the division the arbitral tribunal retains jurisdiction under the award becomes final and executory the cause in an international commercial arbitration includes only the following. Number one, peace of the arbitral tribunal. Second, travel and other expenses. Third, cause of experts' advice. Fourth, travel and other expenses of the witnesses. Number five, cause for legal representation and assistance. And number six, fees and expenses of the appointing authority. In principle, the cause shall be carried out by the unsuccessful party. However, the arbitral tribunal may apportion the cause of unreasonable under the circumstance of the case. The Supreme Court held that where the petitioner had a valid reason to institute the arbitral proceedings as it believed that it was entitled to its claim and the respondents cannot be faulted for defending itself for perceived wrongful acts and conditions. It is only fitting that both parties should share in the burden of the cause of arbitration on a pro rata basis or a proportionate allocation so as not to put a price on the right to legitimate. Correction and Interpretation of International Commercial Arbitration Award If we say award, we are referring to the final decision of the arbitrators. The arbitral or the arbitral award in an international commercial arbitration does not become executory until after the lapse of the period for its amendment. The arbitral award may be amended in any of the following manners. 1. The quantification of the cause and the determination of the party liable or the division between the parties, provided that a reservation for such hearing and quantification has been made by the tribunal. Number two, correction of typographical and similar errors initiated by a party. Parties may ask the tribunal for the correction of the award within 30 days from receipt of the award and with notice to the other party for any error in computation, clerical, or typographical error. 
An error is typographical or clerical in nature and therefore correctable even after the decision has become executory. If the error is occasioned by a mistake in copying or typing, does not alter the substance of the decision and does not affect or prejudice substantial rights. Number three, interpretation of the award. Within the same period for the correction of typographical errors initiated by the parties, the parties may agree to request the tribunal to give an interpretation of a specific point or part of the award. If the tribunal finds the request for correction justified, it shall make the correction or give the interpretation within 30 days from receipt of the request and the interpretation or correction shall form part of the award. Number four, correction of typographical error initiated by the arbitral tribunal. Within 30 days from the date of award, the tribunal may moto proprio or in their own initiative may correct any typographical error. Number five, additional award. Within 30 days from receipt of the award, a party with notice to other party may request the tribunal to make an additional award as to claims presented in the arbitral proceedings but omitted in the award. An international commercial arbitration award may be set aside through the courts, particularly in the regional trial court, provided that the petitioner furnishes proof that there was letter A, defect in the arbitration agreement. Party was under some incapacity or agreement is not valid under applicable law. Letter B, violation of due process. Petitioner was not given proper notice of the appointment of an arbitrator or proceeding or otherwise unable to present his case. Letter C, lack or excess of jurisdiction on the part of the arbitral tribunal. So the award deals with a dispute not contemplated by or not falling within the terms of submission to arbitration subject to the application of the doctrine of separability. Letter D, violation of arbitration agreement. The composition of tribunal or process was not in accordance with the agreement unless such agreement was in conflict with the provisions of the Alternative Dispute Resolution Act. Number two, or the court finds that the subject of the dispute is not capable of settlement under the laws of the Republic. Letter B, the award is in conflict with the public policy of the Republic. In an international commercial arbitration, the venue of setting aside proceedings as well as for the recognition and enforcement of awards and in any application for assistance and supervision except appeal shall be with the regional trial court where number one the arbitration took place number two the asset to be attached or levied upon or the act to be enjoined is located number three any of the parties or two, the dispute resides or has his place of business. Or number four, in the national capital region at the option of the applicant. The petition for setting aside the award must be filed within three months or 90 days from the date on which the party making that application received the award or from the date on which a request for correction, interpretation, or additional award has been disposed of by the tribunal. Recognition is the means by which a Philippine court 
gives legal acknowledgement to a foreign arbitral award and confers upon it the capability to be enforced under the Philippine law through legal processes. Confirmation is the judicial affirmation of a domestic arbitral award. Enforcement means the execution and implementation of the foreign arbitral award through Philippine legal processes. A foreign arbitral award is one made in a country other than the Philippines. They must go through the process of recognition in order to be entitled to enforcement in the Philippines. Domestic arbitral award is one conducted in the Philippines while not requiring recognition and a domestic arbitral awards have to go through the process of confirmation prior to their implementation. On the treatment of international commercial arbitration awards, there is greater kinship between an international commercial arbitration award and a foreign arbitral award. Inferring from the fact that the rules on recognition of foreign arbitral awards are contained in Chapter 4 of the Implementing Rules and Regulation, which governs the international commercial arbitration. arbitration. There exists legal basis to require recognition instead of just confirmation for international commercial arbitration awards. A distinction must be made between the international commercial arbitration award rendered in the Philippines and an international arbitration award rendered outside the Philippines. While both require recognition by the Republic Courts, similar to a foreign arbitral award, an international commercial arbitration award rendered in the Republic is susceptible of vacation or setting aside by the Republic Court. An international commercial arbitration award rendered outside the Republic is not and can only be recognized or refuse recognition it being strictly a foreign arbitral award. Jurisdiction over proceedings for the recognition and enforcement of a foreign arbitral award vacating or setting aside in any application with a court for arbitration assistance is vested by the Alternative Dispute Resolution Act on the uh, Regional Trial Court. The venue of the proceedings shall be number one, where the arbitration proceedings are conducted, number two, where the asset to be attached or levied upon or the act to be enjoined is located. Number three, where any of the parties to dispute reside or his place or business. Or number four, in the national capital judicial regional, the option of the applicant. Except for appeal, the foregoing proceedings shall be deemed as special proceedings. They shall also be uh, summary in nature. In recognition and enforcement of foreign arbitral awards susceptible of recognition, the court shall send notice to the parties at their addresses of record in arbitration. The notice shall be sent at least 15 days before the date set for initial hearing. In general, the conditions and requisites for the recognition and enforcement of foreign judgment in the Philippines are as follows. Number one, proof of foreign judgment. Number two, the judgment must be on a civil or commercial matter. Number three, there must be no lack of jurisdiction, no want of notice, no collusion, no fraud, no clear mistake of law or fact. The judgment 
must not contravene a sound and established public policy of the forum and the judgment must be res judicata in the state that rendered it if we say uh, res judicata it is based on the conclusiveness of the judgment a convention award is a foreign arbitral award made in a state which is a party to the new york convention its recognition and enforcement shall be governed by the uh, new york convention as implemented by the implementing rules and regulation a non-convention award is a foreign arbitral award rendered in a state which is not a party to new york convention it cannot be recognized or enforced under alternative dispute resolution act but it shall be deemed as a presumptive evidence of a right as between the parties in accordance with section 48 rule 39 of the rules of civil procedure as as in convention award as one which is rendered in a state which is not a party to new york convention but which by reason of committee and reciprocity may be recognized and enforced as if it is a convention award the procedure for the recognition and enforcement of convention and as in convention awards are as follows number one filing of application the party relying upon awards or applying for its enforcement shall file with the regional trial court the original or duly authenticated copy of the award and the original arbitration agreement number two confirmation once confirmed the foreign arbitral award shall be enforced in the same manner as final and executory decisions of the courts or courts of law of the republic number three consolidation or concurrent hearings the parties and uh, the tribunal may agree on the following one consolidation of proceedings or the conduct of concurrent hearings with other related arbitration proceedings number four reject or suspension the regional trial court upon application for rejection or suspension of the enforcement of the award may vacate or suspend the enforcement or order the party seeking rejection or suspension to provide appropriate security like a ban for example in the case of as in convention award the court may also remit the award to the arbitral tribunal of the objection raised by or may be cured or rectified number five appeals the decision of the regional trial court recognizing enforcing vacating or setting aside an arbitral tribunal awards may be appealed to the uh, court of appeal in accordance with the special rules on alternative dispute resolution which shall require the appealing party to post a counter ban in favor of the prevailing party in the amount of the award the right to appeal may be validly waived by the agreement or stipulation of the parties without prejudice to judicial review by certiorari under rules or rule 65 of the rules of court non-convention awards unless they qualify to be as in convention awards are not entitled to recognition under or enforcement under the alternative dispute resolution act they may be given legal effect in the philippines on the basis of section 48 
Rule 39 of the Rules on Civil Procedure. Under Article 4 of the IRR, in conjunction with Section 48, Rule 39 of the Rules of Civil Procedure, a non-convention award which does not qualify as in convention award is either conclusive upon the title to a thing or at best it is a presumptive evidence of a right as between the parties and their successors in interest by subsequent title provided there is no want of jurisdiction no want of notice no collusion no fraud and no clear mistake of fact or law thank you so much for listening i hope you learned something and i hope so that you're ready with your activities keep safe everyone bye